good day ladies and gentlemen we are today continuing on with the grind at Le Mans it is not yet a grind we've not really got into it yet we are continuing to just check out some new cars and today this is the Honda Civic Type R22 this is brand new to the game with update 1.38 if you haven't purchased it yet get along to the Japanese part of the auto shop get it bought it's got an interesting setup this one front wing side skirts rear aero and a rear wing and in this case we can't run our famous our much attributed to us personal style end plates 20 because we don't have that option which is a great disappointment but i wonder how it's going to stack up let's go and check out the setup so here we are with the setup then it's 699.71 pp against the target of 700 we're on racing hard tyres. This thing throws out 530 brake horsepower. As we've just gone through the aero package for the car, we'll just drop into the other settings. Fully customizable suspension and everything standard. Fully customizable diff. This is front wheel drive, so we don't really need to worry about the back end stepping out so much, as well as we don't need to use counter steer, and we potentially don't need to use stability management. I don't think we'll turn it on. Downforce at the front, 82 out of a maximum of 165 289 on the rear fully customizable ecu no restrictions fully customizable racing setup on the old git transmission and we're not going to adjust those gears from manual high rpm turbo if we really wanted to think about fuel we could drop that to a medium but at this point in time there's no real drama racing intercooler racing silencer air cleaner and manifold racing brake pads rating brake system we've got the brake controller no clutch flywheel because that's critical for the performance points the pp i don't think it makes that much difference in this kind of race every add-on including the three weight reductions and the increased body rigidity we haven't got the high compression pistons as they're not available this is just the standard k20 civic it's quite a beast so here we are at the circuit of Le Mans we're just going to check up on the settings the assists will be traction control 1 default OBS everything else off controller set settings controller steering sensitivity on 5 force feedback max torque 5 force feedback sensitivity 6 so I have given this car a little bit of a run out what I'm keen to do is try and take the best of the process from the rain so we know it's going to rain at some point, but we don't know how strong it's going to rain and when it's going to rain. So if we aim for a three-stop setup to start with, sorry, two-stop setup to start with, we can then manage our fuel from there. So we're going to start off with the race um, fuel management at six, and then we'll just work out what the rain's doing, and then we can turn it up or turn it down. The car's really stable, so let's go and give it a test. So first thing we're going to do, folks, is get that fuel map to lean on six and then we're going to chase this down now we have the uh, let's measure ourselves where we are against mr bishop as my watch just interferes with my race start so mr bishop we man no let's get on to fuel map six then get to the lean end of the dial and then we're going to challenge yourself against mr bishop and that'll give us some sort of a measure against what it was like when we're racing the f40 the f40 didn't manage to get past mr bishop until after the first couple of turns and it's going to be the same here we got a good line through there so we've got 2.9 on the fuel map already but as we bury the throttle, it um, it sort of runs away with it slightly. So we're back up to three. I think we're going to be good at that point. So let's just cut through the field and make as many overtakes as we can in the first lap. Clear, bright, beautiful day with a little bit of sky, like scattered clouds. I'm not the weatherman or the weather girl, but that's how it looks. Let's go for that gap into sixth gear get past all these boys chasing down that's us in 12th place see if we can make a couple of overtakes into the corner maybe looking for that white marker there it is get alongside the mustang two wheels on the curb we're good 
into 10th. It's quite a nimble little car and we've got 3.1 on the fuel map down to three. It's all go, go, go. So, oh, they've blocked the road. Let's get around them all. 167 mile an hour in fifth gear. Looking for the braking point. There it is. I'm just going to ease off just that bit earlier. In behind Mr. Mendoza. Second gear as he slows down excessively, I think. So if the fuel is at 2.5, which I think it's clearly going to be, we can afford to just drop the old radar onto the old spread the screen. And start to look at what's going to happen in the race. I think that's what we need to do. There it is. Where do we think we're going to estimate the rain is going to come from today? As long as it's just rain and no snow, we should be good. Have they implemented snow yet? I don't think so. 175 into sixth gear. Second gear for this corner. Just keep it nice and smooth. No need to be absolutely thrashing this one. Seven seconds off the lead, almost eight. As we come round to complete the first lap. Looks like we've got the acceleration over Mr. Kawakami in the higher gears. And as we break into this corner, we'll just stop it from running out wide. We lost the place though. We didn't have the speed through the corner, did we? And that's because we've got limited front downforce but Mr Kawakami just running it slow and I'm expecting him to break hard here which we'll just nip past him on so we, we gave him it back what he taketh away we will take it away also so there's the pit entry on the right we're going to shoot past that this time and get into these corners and then we'll give you a rundown of who's where. We're in fifth place. So Mr. McEwen leads the race from Mr. Portilla. Mr. Blazan in third. Yamanaka fourth. We can see him there ahead of us. Kawakami in sixth. Mendoza seventh. Haywood eighth. Nothing on the rain radar as yet. get after that uh, those cars in front don't run too wide there you're liable to get a penalty so we haven't made a massive amount of time in the last quarter of that lap so 7.3 seconds behind the leaders let's get the hammer down and see where we go no rain on the radar we've got 2.1 laps of fuel so we've got plenty rain is just appearing bottom left hand corner Southwest, it's coming from, so we're racing towards the rain. Those front tyres are doing everything we need of them. Six seconds off the leader, Mr. McEwen is moving. Mr. Blazan, we're just going to get alongside and go past. That leaves Portilla in the Viper. Break halfway between those markers. Get dug into the corner, second gear. Two tyres over the kerb. Now you get two types of rain here. You get the flirty rain that kind of skirts about and it always makes you think, oh, do I need to change tyres? 
And then you've got the heavy stuff. Well, it depends. You never know which way it's going to go. It's so unpredictable. And that's the charm of this race. It doesn't always guarantee you a race. I don't know where we're going to be here. I generally don't know whether we're going to be able to stay out for lap three. Or whether we are in a, in a mind to pit. The cloud formation seems to be changing in front of us. We can't really see it yet. It's off to our left hand side. Break early for this corner. There's Mr. Portilla and Mr. McEwen just in front. You can see that little knob of cloud disappearing. And we can see some heavier cloud coming up there. So, so that's backing away. Everything is telling me that we're going for three laps on the out. You can see it clouding up above us. Are we able to slide past Mr. Portilla? We did a better job than last time. And looks like we're about to go into the rain, but we're going to scoot along past and get lap three under our belts. Doesn't look like it's going to be massively heavy, so the rain is going to start ever so soon. What's Mr. McEwen doing? He is going to the pits. Bit wide on entry there, but we're into the lead of the race then. Looks like Mr. Portilla's come with us, Mr. Yamanaka also. We don't know what tyres we're going to pit for at the end of this lap, so we just need to keep a weather eye on that radar. Four oh nine fastest lap. That's somewhere where the uh, where the F forty was, wasn't it? So where the F forty had the two hundred mile an hour on the straights, maybe this has it in the corners and the XL acceleration out of the corners, maybe. So we're really digging into this rain cloud now. As we charge down, I'm looking for my cable, I am attached, that's good. As we charge down the Mulsan straight, looking for those braking markers, we've got a four second lead over the car behind. Just braking really late into there. Just making time over our fastest lap, but we won't get a fastest lap this time round because we're going to the pits and won't cross the start finish line. But we look like we've got some heavy coming, but maybe we're going to bypass that. We don't know which way the wind is going to orientate, do we? Track seems to be perfectly dry. Not a problem with the slicks at all. I'm looking to see the end of the cloud bank in the in the distance. We're looking into the depth of the cloud, but not seeing anything. I hope you've been able to pick up where the brake markers are. They are pretty much the same in almost every car we're going to drive around here. You just have to adjust it for, for the process. Whether it's a little bit quicker on the straight, you'll have to brake that bit earlier. If it's slower on the straight, you can brake that bit later. And look at that, we're going parallel all the way to that heavy rain. But we're not seeing what's coming. So it looks like we're going to pit and keep the hard tyres on. It 
looks like we're going to get fortunate with the rain in both races. So far, no major dramas. Are we able to get through the race, though, without the wet tyres? There's a question. Looks like the end of a rain is approaching, but there's also some heavy stuff from the left. We're going to go in. We're not going to change tyres. We're going to. Well, we might change off the hards. Actually, looking at the state of them, they might just be cooking too much. There we go. Let's change the hards again and let's take all the fuel. I wonder if there's a possibility there that we could uh, drop to fuel map 5 maybe. Mr. Portilla and Mr. Yamanaka join us. We've got an 11.8 second lead. Mr. Kawakami in. And we look to have burnt the most fuel. Currently dropped to position 3 because of the pit stop arrangements, the, the pit box arrangements. I do like that we've represented the pit stops. I think it's good. Mr. Haywood now looking like he's about to go past us. In the Lamborghini. We are going to now exit the pit box. He is past us. He's out and away. Just got to be gentle with the new tyres to start with. Lots of wheel spin. You never know what tyres you're going to need at this point of the race. We anticipate Mr. Haywood will pit at the end of this lap because he's pitting every two. Now we could pit at the end of this lap if we need to. Take the last lap of fuel and go all the way to the end of the race on whatever tyres we've got, whatever they're going to be. But you never know what this race is going to do. Whilst I saw that we were potentially at the end of the rain cloud, there's even more chance that this go to even stronger rain. We're maybe just running down the side of the cloud. It's flirting with us. This is that flirty rain we talked about. So there's Mr. Haywood, some five seconds ahead. We'd already passed Mr. Haywood when uh, when he pitted. So we didn't actually pit from in front of us. He did actually well with a shorter pit stop, I'm assuming, because he didn't use all his fuel. And it looks like we've got a splash coming up. We get a penalty there for going wide. Mm. There's something to watch out for. That's an unusual penalty. Don't know whether that was left or right. There's something we need to understand. Now you do get a penalty if you break out left too far here. And the end of the cloud is in front of us. So looks like we can plan to go all the way to the end of the pit stop on these tyres. I did I say pit stop? I meant um, on the end of this stint. Just as it looks like we're about to run through a little splash of rain. We are some seven seconds ahead of Mr. McEwen. And I thought we'd be something. But Mr. McEwen's pitted as well, hasn't he? He pitted from in front of us.
There's that little splash of rain that's coming down. You can see the rain radar on the bottom left-hand side of the screen now. Just down there, the little rain water depth gauge. If you don't know what that is and you've never seen that before, that's an indicator of the water depth on the track. So it's down next, down below me here. And it's um, basic understanding of that little gauge is when it rains, the blue bar indicates how deep the water is so that first horizontal line is the point at which race tires become ineffective or the least favorite tire so when you get above that first line intermediates are the tire to use and when you get to the second line that's when you really need to consider using wets but you don't have to as mr hayward goes to the pits we continue on We've got another two laps we can do with our fuel and tyre capabilities. So how far ahead now as we go out into clear skies and the track will start to dry up. There we go, we're on a dry line now. We need to just be careful because the track is really greasy. And I just let off the brake so we didn't spin off. Do you see bottom left hand corner? There's a rain cloud coming in. Oh, it seems to be part of the same rain cloud. Let's see where we go. We're nine seconds, almost ten seconds ahead of Mr. McEwen. He's going to be stopping on the same schedule that we are. This is a flying lap again. looks to be heavier rain in there but it looks like it's going to pass us going to the north unless the wind changes direction now we've got a time penalty down here didn't we need to make sure we don't do that again I don't know where we got it we could have got it just here we also could have got it just there and off to the right hand side just there but I don't feel so so that cloud that was threatening from the west is now moving away to the north and there's another bank of cloud coming in from the southwest we're now to 11 and a half second lead no problems it seems with moisture on the track And it's a long, snaky, thin band of rain all connected together. Unusual rain formation, but I suppose in a mass cloud, that's how it happens. 13.5 seconds in the lead. Really interesting how this is evolving. There's a possibility we might have to take tyres, but we're hoping it's not going to be for very long if we get into that rain. it seems to be thinning out as we get near to it fourteen seconds in the lead now what we could do 
is just be a bit clever and dive in the pits and take the fuel pit stop early and be in the pit stop for the rain. I think that's what we're going to do. We're not. We are going to change tyres, but we're going to go to hards. No, we're not. We're going to not change the tyres. We're just going to. This is lap five, so we're going to go six and seven. We want two laps of fuel. Here's the rain coming now. This might be a monumental mistake, but Mr. McEwen's coming as well. We've just got to be a little bit gentle going out for the first turns. Mr. Portilla and Mr. Yamanaka are going on, so they've not taken new tyres. We're persisting with the two-stop. There's 2.2 laps of fuel, that's all we need. And we're into that rain, and it's not yet into the heavy stuff so we're not out of that first line yet you see on the bottom left hand side of the screen and we've already pitted and we're now going to the end of the race with this configuration So we're in third place and the sun's out and bright the track is wet there will be spray behind us we will be lifting water off the track with our tires but we've done our pit stops we won't be pitting again still a little bit of greasy going into the corners the last two laps we're going to be clean and free and able to race to the end with no more rain interruptions that would be awesome gonna to look to break just that little bit early mr. Portilla and mr. Yamanaka running line astern in first and second place that helicopter just hovering above the trees there. That's phenomenal pilot work. We're just slowing down a bit earlier, just being a little bit cautious. 9.4 seconds behind Mr. Portilla. Just half a second between those guys at front, but there's 12 seconds to the car behind. We've kind of dropped onto the two stop sort of routine. Now we need to be aware just how far we are from the end of the seventh lap and the timing. only five minutes left nine seconds back lap six and seven are going to be flyers lap seven is going to be the next time we can really take a hit on that fastest lap As the front end just washes out into that corner well these tires have been taking a bit of damage they've been asked to do an extra lap I don't know why but I've got a bit of music running through my head it's the killers Mr Brightside Mr. Portilla and Mr. Yamanaka both go to the pits. 
So that opens up the opportunity for us to take the lead. I'm not seeing any rain on the rain radar, so as we go into what will be the last lap, as my medication reminder comes up on my wrist, which I'm just going to ignore and not take. Everybody else dropping into the pits because that's what their schedule was. That was all the driver there missing his braking point. So the F40 was 30 minutes 15 seconds. We are just 22 seconds ahead of Mr. Portilla. Whilst I think we probably conceded the lead of the race a little bit unnecessarily, it just worked in our favour being in the pits while that heavy rain was coming down. We didn't have to adapt to that coming out, well, staying out on the circuit. we sure on the pit stop by not taking the tyres which seems to have been a beneficial move nothing on the rain radar at all so let's see where we are against the fastest lap we're actually 0.384 down it looks like As we miss the braking point and go shooting straight through the pit, straight through the gravel, we were lucky. Just picking up that fastest sector. <laughs> wow. I was too busy looking at the timing. And that's what you've got to be very, very careful about. We didn't get a penalty from uh, race control. I was very careful when we came down there last time. Almost threw that away completely, but we are now 20 seconds to the good. One minute 12 left on the race. Twenty-seven seconds in the lead. Well, what do we think to the car? We've only got half a lap left to talk about it. It's very capable. Very capable. Brakes are a little bit down on what we'd anticipate. But I think it's overspeeding quite a bit in terms of... I think it goes much faster than I anticipated. So we can't really give it any more braking performance. It's as light as it can be. It's got all the weight reductions on. You just have to be a little bit more cautious with the front wheel drive on the wheel spin. It will continue to go straight on as we know at this next corner. But as a grind car, I think it will do it beautifully. The two-stop routine works really, really well. Got to try and find a car that's going to do the one-stopper. Capable of four laps. And then we've got to get the, the right weather. The weather was kind to us today. Took a little bit of working out. We did a bit of variation on the pit stop which I know we're not going to be so lucky of in the future, but hey, you, when the sun's shining, look on the bright side. There we go, and that's where the link was. Cheesy, cheesy. However, here we go, come to through to finish the race. We've got the fuel. The fuel was absolutely spot on. Tyres were absolutely spot on, just using the two sets. No need for the wets again. We come through and we don't get the fastest lap on the second time around. But there she is, another red car. Absolute stunner. So for 30 minutes, 33 seconds. So some 18 seconds slower than the F40. 31 seconds ahead of Mr. Portilla. We didn't actually lap anybody, but Mr. Lopez was down there in final place. We got the fastest lap of the race of 4 minutes, 9 seconds and 75 0 0.75 on lap 2. Well, what do you think? Do we get the 
I think we do get the clean race bonus, so that pops us into the 11 million range. Almost 100 miles for the day, so that showed it a bit of a warm-up drive. I was just going to say, as the planes go over, leaving the red, white and blue smoke, we see the car take off. Well, what do you think, folks? Did that live up to its playing? It's, it's brand new to the game, so this is the first time I've run it. Hopefully you can get out there and buy it as well, and it's up to you what you do. If you've got any suggestions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line and suggest a car. But thank you very much, folks. We'll see you on the next one. All the best.